who I am and what we do. But um, I've also been very blessed to have some supporters and, and dear friends of mine. So I'd like to introduce, well, if you would allow me to, I'd, I'd like to uh, give everyone a minute here to uh, introduce themselves and uh, talk about what they do. And, you know, everyone kind of remember that the paranormal, cryptid, everything kind of goes hand in hand. You're never going to have one without the other. UFOs, cryptid. Paranormal, UFO, I mean it all, there's always going to be a story, there's always going to be something where it all relates. So a lot of people kind of say, you know, well it's either one or the other. All right? I don't believe in that. I think everything's connected. Um, uh, we're very lucky to have uh, the Creep Geeks here. And, and Greg, first time, I never met him, and the first time I'd ever heard him, he was talking about how our organization was a little strange because there's a cryptic guy and a paranormal guy they're best friends and do this stuff in the woods and there's no problems, everyone gets along. Well, I believe that's the way it should be. Uh, Tiny believes that, uh, Greg and Omi believe that. Um, we can introduce you up to a minute and we're very lucky. So, um, if you give me a second here. And that was supposed to work. <coughs> yeah, there we go. Think for one on one, another cryptids. Uh, locally, we're, we're going to be talking about local stuff here. Um, so who are we? We're the Asheville Cryptid Society. Again, my name is Christian McLeod. Uh, I got into this about 24 years ago. Uh, I had experience. I'm originally from uh, Northern Appalachia, uh, and I was uh, pretty much I, I encountered Bigfoot. Didn't know what it was. I was a little kid, and this is what happens. <laughs> this is what a warp you went to. Why bother with the therapy? Just start a cryptid organization. <laughs> um, and we're here because we want to help. Because there's a lot of people that have seen stuff and they don't know what they've, you know, they think they're going crazy. I can't tell how many times I've picked up a phone uh, on, on my, my hotline and it's, listen, I think I'm going insane. I talked to a truck driver in Texas two weeks ago. Is it two weeks ago? Yeah. Nine and a half foot dog man chasing his rig down the Louisiana Bayou. Tore metal on his door. Listen, tore He said, he didn't know how to explain it. He said, I, 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 am I going insane? I said, no, it didn't happen. I said, did it bite you? He goes, no. I said, you're fine. <laughs> I said, so, I mean, it's just, but he just needed that release. You know what I'm saying? He needed to know he wasn't losing it. And it's hard when people say, you know, Melvin says, I saw a 12 foot, 8 foot. He tells that to his best friend. They're like, you're crazy as hell. I believe him. Because Melvin, he's got no reason not to tell me the truth. Yeah. So that's how we believe. We just believe if, if you say you saw it, you saw it. There's no reason not to. But that also puts a stigma on people. Um, I do paranormal investigations as well, and we were doing an investigation, and there was a police officer that witnessed something. Do you think he wanted his name down on the report? H-E double hockey sticks, no. He didn't want to be stigmatized. That we're still doing. It's 2019, the word goes to paranormal Bigfoot, ooh, you know? It's, it still makes people think you want to be labeled. Oh, they saw Bigfoot one too crazy. You just can't think like that anymore. It's a different day, different age. But that's why we're here, because we want to help people. And I'm pushing the wrong button. Or I have really fat thumbs. Or both. Okay, that was working. So. Uh, Still no. Okay. Haunted. How do you fix it? All right. I didn't bring any sage with me. I guess Shelly coming with sage. All right, we're here to help educate people and discuss the possibilities of cryptids and their behaviors. I love that. That's, of course, well that is, Harry from Harry and Henderson's. Um, I've actually had reports, this is exactly what it looks like, different color. Block teeth and everything except bigger, more muscular. They did a great job with that outfit. If I was in the woods and I actually saw that guy dressed up like that, <coughs> hopefully the GoPro's working. Because the feet people. <laughs> I'm like the cowardly cryptic guy. <laughs> All right. Uh, great sources of reliable information. All right. Big Cundiff has been incredibly cool to me and Tiny and probably to most people. I'm sure everyone here listens to Big Cundiff, Dogman Encounters, Bigfoot Encounters. Great source of information. He just recently has been dealing with a whole lot of rigmarole because he pulled three shows. Um, that were suspected frauds. This kind of guy is. He thought it might be real, or he thought it might be fake, so he pulled it. So that's the kind of guy he is. He's just awesome. George Nori, I'm biased with Nori. A lot of people like him, a lot of people don't. I think Nori's awesome. 
I get a lot of good information from him. And he was very kind to us uh, as podcasters. Uh, he, we were Fringe Investigations, the podcast that we were doing. We were podcasting a month in October from coast to coast, and he was he was very generous to us. So our affiliates, um, MD Paranormal, of course that's tiny. Tiny, want to stand up and tell me a little bit MD Paranormal? And again, my friends, I'm sorry, I mean, it's actually Daniel, but I call him Tiny, obviously. I'm one of three founding members of MD Paranormal. The second is right here. Um, you can check us out on Facebook, mdparanormal.com. Contact us at uh, mdparanormal at gmail.com. There's a lot of outlets out there for us. We're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, all that good stuff. Um, we investigate private residences. We investigate businesses. Um, we've been called as far away as Mississippi to investigate. We, uh, if the client says, we don't even know we were here. We were never there. We have a lot of good evidence online that you can look at. But not all of it. Unfortunately, not necessarily the best. Um, like he was saying, it all kind of goes hand in hand. That's why we're MD Paranormal Encrypted Research. I'm the encrypted part of MD Paranormal. We kind of got together. It's because he's half big. <laughs> Uh, we investigate, well, anything and everything. Weird, creepy, we love it, all of it. Um, just like you were saying, it's, it's odd for the two genres to get along, and I don't understand why. Creepy, and so I've had that conversation quite a bit. But uh, that's kind of what we do. You want to add anything else? Oh, we, we do monthly gatherings at our shop. We have a shop called the Shop Eclectic in Marion, North Carolina. It's uh, 49 State Street. You like the way he deferred to the boss? Yeah. Or, yeah. Before sitting down. <laughs> I just want to make sure everyone noticed that. Yeah. yeah. I do want to say something else. I have seen their organization in, I, I want to say combat almost, because that's kind of what it looked like to me. The most discreet, helpful people. Let me, Tiny, what do you guys charge? Nothing. There you go. Nothing. I've watched them, all they do is want to help people. Now they'll take a donation or some gas money, don't get you wrong, but this isn't this this is a calling for him. This man is actually gifted. I've seen him go into a place and four shadows just kind of go uh, and it was, come on in, you're good. And uh, that's just the kind of guy he is. Uh, I don't affiliate or associate with people I don't trust, or I wouldn't have open my house for Christmas. And I've been blessed, and I use that word blessed to have the people in my life. Uh, that I work with to do that. Is there anything else? Um, well, I was talking about the gatherings. We do a, a monthly gathering at our shop. And it is to try and dispel some of the stigma that goes along with paranormal. And I use paranormal as a blanket term. It's everything. It's paranormal, it's cryptid, it's UFO. It's all weird and unusual. So what we want to do, it's kind of like a paranormal AA in a way. <laughs> Because I've had a huge amount of experiences my entire life, some of which could be traumatic. I was lucky enough to where it didn't traumatize me. It made me want to dig further. Not everybody's that lucky. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to have a good time with it. If we get definitive proof, cool. If not, cool. Yeah, we've got some good proof. Do you have anything you want to say? Uh, no, not really. I think you said it all. We just want to help. And uh, we'll dig up some cards. I don't have any on me. We've got some in the car if anybody wants any. Um, but look us up online. And they're on my website. They're totally affiliated. Like they to use our page. Um, we're also very lucky to have Greg and Omi from Crypt Geeks. Uh, Crypt Geeks. I want to say Crypt. It's just like you get so used to say Cryptid all the time. And I'll be honest with you, for the first time I met him, I thought it was always Cryptid Geeks. Uh -huh. <laughs> I had to be proud of Crypt Geeks. So, Greg, Omi, if you would like to stand and, and just explain what you guys do. These guys, uh, I'm sorry, um, they're new to my organization, but they become fast friends and they're incredible at what they do, so don't be shy. We're not shy. I mean, you're not dumb. No. I thought I was related to him the first time I met him. It was just so basically what it is, is uh, we have a podcast and 
we started in New Mexico because New Mexico is weird, like really weird. I mean, every, the daily is, is super weird. And so we started a podcast, and we like all of it. We like ghosts, paranormal, cryptids. We like the weird stories. We, we like it all. But the whole thing we don't really like is the murder and the cop stuff, because that's real. You know what I mean? So, and that's kind of how we met a long time ago, was through like ghosts and ghosts and stuff like that, and listening and chatting and back and forth, because we worked together for a long time. Anyway, long story short, we decided to move back to the East Coast because we're from the East Coast. And once we got here in, in North Carolina, in Western North Carolina, we realized it's just as weird. <laughs> and so we love all the stories and the weirdness. So with our podcast, we decided to reach out and try to find like-minded good people that are open to all this sort of thing and, and don't judge and you know and have an open mind for the whole thing. And that's where we met, and, well, everybody, Bobby and Tess. Daniel, the encrypted guy over there. And so what we've decided to do is, is become a part of all of it because we think the same way he does. That there shouldn't be a separation. I mean, you shouldn't be a ghost guy or a cryptic guy or look at the other group like they're crazy because they believe in something you don't. So we pretty much decided to uh, do the show here. We love all the stories and stuff. We have a card up there and you can call and basically leave a voicemail. You don't have to talk to us. If you have a story you want to share, share it, people would have you put it on the podcast. But our goal is to investigate any and everything and anywhere we can. So um, that's just been kind of where we're at this whole thing. And we've been uh, really lovely and it's been fun. So if you have a chance to want to listen, just go to creepypeaks.com. The podcast will be there. You can contact us through that. We're on YouTube as well. And uh, yeah, thanks man. Oh, no, thank you. And again, these guys are linked to my website, so if you get there, you lose a card, whatever, just go to my website. Hey, where are those Creepy Kings? Um, and we're also very lucky to have, for, forgive me if I say this wrong, Bob. What, pronounce your last name for me? Bobby B. That's good enough. Bobby, we have Bobby B. <laughs> Bobby B. is a past lives, um, I guess, projectionist uh, or explorer. explorer. And if you, he's local, so if you want to tell everyone what you do and give a little spiel. Hey, I, I have a totally different take on, on ghosts, which is going back to our past life version of ourselves and exploring through a non-hypnotic technique that we worked with. There's a meetup in town called the Past Lives Project, which met last night, unfortunately, and we do first Mondays over at the West National Library. Pastlifeproject.org uh, is the website, uh, and the uh, meetup also. Check it out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And my friends, we are also very lucky to have the one and only Shelly Dangeresque, right? You showed up, so Shelly, you want to stand up and introduce yourself, tell them what you do. Shelly's a paranormal investigator and a crypt investigator. And she's like a sister from another mister. Well, I think that's all that needs to be said, actually. <laughs> I also have a Facebook group uh, called Daily Paranormal Insights. And so I invite all of you to join it. Uh, it's very, very fun and informative. And um, so, sorry, so late. So, but just sorry, nice to meet all of you. This is one of Shelly's <laughs> Doc, you want to say anything? Huh? You want to say anything? I mean, I, I can say and, and This usually never happens, but we also have the one and only, one and only Dr. Mulder, the radionics <laughs> king. So if you'd like to talk a little bit about radionics, what do you do? Okay, uh, basically I uh, build radionics machines. Uh, Mr. Christian has used my machine several times with great results, I understand. It's still alive. And uh, I've been working with Joshua for probably like about 12, 13 years now. And, uh, yeah, this is unexpected for me to stand up and bring you this. Uh, I'm just happy you're here. Uh, again, he drove all the way from South Carolina to be here tonight. Again, yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. I took 45 minutes of my life. I know. I'll be here about that for the next, <laughs> I'll be here about that for the next three years. <laughs> and finally, my friends, if we have uh, Robin Bruner here. Robin is a manager for FedEx. She's a dear friend of mine. Uh, she's responsible for making sure all my stuff gets printed, so it looks good. So if anyone needs any printing needs or anything like that, her card's up here as well. Now that the whole segment's been paid for, it's been a topic. Oh well, it worked once. So, oh, we're up with Cryptid Studies Institute. Um, I'm working with them in Tennessee. Great guys. We'll talk about that in a minute, a little bit. So, all right. Have you ever wondered what a Bigfoot is? Anyone? Anyone got any ideas? What, what do you think a Bigfoot is? No, no, you raise your hand. What is it? What do you think? Just some big hairy monkey in the woods or what? I mean, 
Well, that's what I thought it was. Or yeah. a man. Or man. A Maybe type. both. Human man. Hey, you never know. With a thyroid issue? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> what, you shave them? There you go. You got anyway, does anyone else have any thoughts about what Bigfoot might be or is? Gigantopithecus, maybe? Something like that? Maybe it's something that's never gone extinct? You know, that we still can't tie man to, hey, is that one missing link? Is he it? We don't know. So you have to think along those lines. You know, a lot of people think, oh, it, you know, it'd be extinct. Look at the coelacanth, right? Coelacanth, oh, that's been gone for 150 million years. Well, it's like the guy just ate some last week in the Indian Ocean. You know, so it's one of those things we just don't know. Uh, well, what is a Sasquatch is? Exactly, what is a Yeti? I don't know. I always like that picture of Yeti because that's like the big Yeti because he's supposed to be big and short. And they, they grew custom their climate. You know, there's that theory where things grow to their climate. The colder, the bigger, the warmer, the smaller. That's why a scum cave is small and it's pinky. Things like that. But I, I would imagine a Yeti would have to be quite big to survive if he was realistically. I mean, if this, if this is a real animal, simply from the environment. And the fact you'd have to move through the mountains, you probably have to have significantly longer arms. How many witness reports is it from this area? They're on the real. Well, I'll tell you, I have taken some witness reports from this area. I've had people breaking down. I've had people calling me from the doctor's office. I've had people that I believe now are probably drug addicts from Valium because they don't know how to explain. I'm not criticizing. They just don't know how to explain what happened to them. Because, you know, this doesn't happen. Those aren't real. Um, and it's very sad. And a lot of them are local. But for us to talk about that, let's exactly talk about, you know, oops, fat fingers. All right. Why are cryptids kept a secret? All right, I'm going to attempt to answer all these questions tonight. More, if possible. But why are cryptids kept a secret? This is, who thinks the government knows about Bigfoot? All right. Who thinks the government knows about Kennedy? I'm just thinking for my conspiracy theories. <laughs> All right. If the government knows about Bigfoot, why are they keeping a lid on it? Why would you not talk about, openly say, listen, truth of the matter is, there's a 12. Or, 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 you know, if you want to be honest, nationally, there's a 7 to 12 foot, you know, undiscovered North American primate running around who can have a temper tantrum that possibly every once in a while might kill a hiker. Have a nice night. <laughs> you know, so why, why, would, why don't they do that? All right? And what are cryptids? I always like giving this cryptids are undiscovered life forms. Now, a lot of people think cryptids are just like, you know, Dogman, Mothman, Sasquatch, Bigfoot, whatever. I throw everything, I put aliens in the cryptids. That's big. Right, that's the way I do it. Because it's, a, it's an unknown life form. It doesn't have to be unintelligent, it's a life form. So I just kind of narrow it down. So cryptids are that whole blanket for me. Again, a lot of people just think cryptids are undiscovered monsters. I don't like using the word monster. Because, you know, what do they think of us? We're pink hairless apes. Okay. Mm -hmm. It tastes like pork. Chicken. Yeah. <laughs> Cryptids can be anywhere. Um, again, this isn't something, that, you know, Tiny and I, when we go investigate or we'll do an investigation, we don't usually talk about where we are. But I can assure you, yeah. that's pretty much on a mountain and there's nothing out here. That's about as far as I can see. So when we go places, we go places. But there's always a report for some reason. At any time of the year. I got a phone call uh, from a friend of ours from Cherokee. And Bigfoot stole their Thanksgiving dinner. I love this story. Now, this story happened firsthand. I was involved. Not by myself being there, but some of my, I guess I was going to say inventory, some of my property being there. Got a friend of mine lives on the reservation. Um, I don't want to give his name because he's out of information too. Big boy, good friend of ours, um, and his family celebrates Thanksgiving every year out at his little secluded camping spot off the res. And uh, his grandmother is a 
wonderful woman. She's in her, God, I guess she's 88 now. She's got, you know, all her facilities, and she runs that show like the Army. Um, her smallest son is 6'4", so there's, you know, they're big, they're big boys. And there's about 16 of them, the whole family. They're all carrying coolers. Grandma's leading away because she knows where she's going. Don't mess with the boss. And all of a sudden she stops and she says something in Cherokee and my friend has been very westernized. So his first word was what? And he got, boom, slammed with her walking stick. And that meant stop, which he did. And then before he starts going off, why'd you do that? She tells him to shut up and she points her cane like this at about 60 feet from her there's a tree, and in front of that tree is about a 12, 13 foot soup loop, kind of doing this gimmick. And she just said, again in Cherokee, we're leaving, put everything down, and walk away. Well, my friend, again, wasn't paying attention and said, Why are we leaving? <laughs> that was two. So, she said, put the cooler down, turn around, and walk away. So they all put their stuff down, turned around, walked away. Now, how did I personally get involved with that? That was my cooler. <laughs> I had just bought that damn thing. And he saw it in the back of my car, and he's like, hey, man, can I buy a shirt? I'm not going to use it. I've since had to buy another one. It has nothing but t-shirts in it now. It's not being used. But my point is this. It's active. He saw it. His whole family saw it. <coughs> They, they don't talk about it. That's probably the seventh or eighth time uh, his grandmother's had an encounter in her life. It's super low. They don't mess with them. If they left, had they turned around and not left everything there, they probably would have had a problem. But they fed him. They gave him what they wanted. I, I, I'm guessing he likes the beer because I guess they had a couple of 12-packs in their life now. So I found all this out. This is the best part of the start. <laughs> I get a phone call. And I'm like, hey man, how's the dinner? I'm at Arby's. <laughs> I'm like, what? And then he proceeds to tell me what happened. So uh, I guess Arby's was over on Thanksgiving. They went to the airport, Arby's actually. All right. But let's talk about our favorite one here the one and only Bigfoot. First, why would we call him Bigfoot? That's Patty. This is Patty's footprint. Do I have to say any more? <laughs> this is a small female. All right, Greg, you're married to a small female. Imagine if she was small enough to have this as a footprint and somebody small. How, how would your life be? All right. You're tough. I think that, I, I think the same thing. I look at my wife and I'm thinking, hey, no way. I don't think it would work. All right. That's Patty, 1967. We have never been able to debunk this film. All right. Here's a good representation. This is off of Vic Pundit's website. The reason why I like to use it is because it's accurate. That's about right. Most reports, that's where he is. He's 7 to 10 foot tall and between 750 to 12 pounds. My friend, people get weight wrong all the time. Tiny, if we double tiny size, let's say tiny is 200 pounds. If we double tiny yeah, size. Yeah, it is. I know. Well, I'm talking about when you were four. <laughs> if we double tiny size, he's not going to be 400 pounds. All right, he's going to be triple that weight. Right? People get the weight wrong all the time. You get the musculature wrong. This guy's probably 1,250 pounds right down here. All right, that's how big they are. The power in these things. We have seen the evidence of the power of these things. It's just it's phenomenal. Once you take a six-inch oak, you've seen the friction burns on it. just snapped. And just, it's crazy. Again, tallest report I've ever heard is 15 foot tall. Um, most footprints are between 16 and 23 inches and 8 to 12 inches wide. We follow the 150 rule when it comes to footprints. All right? If it's 20 inches long and you're looking for our fuzzy friend, then it should at least be 10 inches wide. All right? That's, that's usually how it works with Bigfoot. All right. Earliest reports of Bigfoot in North America come from Europeans. It's from Leif Erikson. 986 AD, my friends. Right? Erickson said they were met with violence from the creatures. He also marked an incredible offensive smell. This is a depiction where they said it happened. The second they were getting off the beach, 
And it's five or six when you come and get my ass whooping part of my language. <laughs> but that's pretty much what happened. So they don't play. They, they were very <laughs> territorial. Very territorial. Um, you're dealing with Vikings. I mean, these are not the nicest people back in history. They pretty much came. They landed. This is now ours. Hey, that did not happen. Those of you, who might, any historians in here? Anyone in the story? Uh, they left. Bigfoot one, Viking zero. They left. They went home. Uh, a lot of people believe that they left because uh, Lee Farrington uh, was became a Christian and he was trying to spread Christianity through the Viking kingdom. That might have been part of it. The truth matters. My personal belief is he ran up against something they were ready for. And so what you're saying is when he saw Bigfoot, he got Jesus. Pretty much. It made sense to me. <laughs> It made total sense to me. Okay, now, okay, oh, yeah, I believe on that one. So, something else. Um, they used to have the name Stone Giants, um, and this is applicable to this particular time because uh, Bigfoot would rub dirt, mud into his fur and let it bake in the sun. Uh, for, again, this is all hypothetical, but we do know they did this. Uh, I'm thinking it was probably for bugs, keep the bugs and insects off of them. But what it would do, as you think about it back then, they had bows and arrows and spears. Well, if you got an inch of, it would bounce off them. That's why these come stone giants, because their weapons wouldn't work. And when the Europeans came with our fire sticks, that changed the game. Fire sticks. I like that. Fire sticks. Hellfire. All right. <laughs> Lewis and Clark encountered Bigfoot in their travels. They referred him as Bigfoot. He was known as the Wild Man. Where's my conspiracy theorist again? Meriwether Lewis. What happened to his own writings? Remember? Remember he shot himself in the head twice with a gun he had to fill up and tempt down. The first one didn't get it. A lot of people think it's because that he had written things about his travels that would scare people out of westward expansion. And there's a whole Jeffersonian conspiracy about that. I don't knock it. It's possible. You know, you can't have manifest destiny if you've got 12-foot monsters in the woods. Doesn't work. My big guy, Theodore Roosevelt. We're about Bigfoot encounters in Book the Wilderness Hunter in 1889, the bombing incident. Um, after the death of his first wife, when he goes to his ranch uh, for two years, and he left his daughter with his sister, he became pretty much a roughneck. <coughs> and at a fire where they were doing some they were doing some cattle branding, he heard about the bombing incident, and he believed it enough that he put it in his book. Now. Let's talk about Teddy Roosevelt for a little bit here, because I'm a big Teddy Rex fan. Most reports of cryptids come from what? What area? Anyone? West. Northwest. Actually, they're close, with exception. They're all close to or adjacent to national parks. All right. Who created the national park system? Why? Think about it. Why? <laughs> and what's in the wilderness? Exactly. Only know shoot down. Drop the mic on. Alright? It's just something to think about. Alright? Big has been on North America continent for a very long time. This, I've never been able to debunk this. This is an alleged picture taken by the Smithsonian. Uh, from some caves in California. Now, I cannot remember the name right now. Forgive me, I don't have that in my notes. But <coughs> it's, it's a pretty popular thing. If you Google, you know, Bigfoot Cave, California, it'll probably pop up. But these guys were covered. Uh, there were some guys, they were they were digging for back water. And they came about, they found about 62 bodies this size, all mummified. All right? Now, this guy is allegedly 5'10". And this was one of the smaller women or, or female bodies they found. Look at the musculature. Look at that. I mean, even. It's crazy. Cherokee Nation has been in this area, particularly, for 14,000 years. Angeles, Kentucky, Kansas City. Did I say that right? Okay, so. All right. <coughs> They've been talking about Bigfoot since their culture inception. They say Bigfoot predates the Cherokee Nation in this area. This is another one. This was taken in Canada about eight years ago. 
Um, someone said it was debunked, and it came out and said Todd Stanley had something to do with it, and then the truth came out and said no. Um, that was an actual picture taken by like a 16 year old kid, and the uh, parents were trying to sell it, and then you got all messed up, which is why you don't try to make your money doing a crypto thing, it just won't work. Again, these are things I've just heard. I don't know how relevant that is. Uh, I'll never, I didn't take the picture. I just like using it because it's good representation. Because it's, I mean, look at that. If that's, if that's real, look at that most muscular structure. Does anyone know why that neck would be like that? Why his neck would be like that? That's just raw strength. That's his muscle. Think about the power that can generate. Um, James Mooney, anyone here ever read Mooney? Cherokee from this? Great books. Highly recommend them. But they talk about the Bigfoot legends to their mythology, <coughs> Sioux Blue tricksters, stuff like that. Basically, the Cherokee, they have, they have a policy. Avoid them. Uh, which was an example I gave the story I told you. Drop Thanksgiving dinner, walk away. My brand new igloo cooler. All right. It was blue. I never got to use it. How big was using it as a school? I, I don't know. <laughs> Alright, this is Devil's Courthouse on the Blue Ridge Parkway. It's home to the Fairy Soup Blue from Cherokee Folklore. We've all been there, right? I know. I can look around. I know some people have been there. Um, I always like putting this in there because that just goes to show you. That Cherokee Folklore bleeds into our life just because it's the Devil's Courthouse. That's Bigfoot. And that's a national park monument. We've all been there. I still, I've just shown pictures of the three of us up there. Very nice. I don't know if I ever took those to you. Where is one? Great. Love that place. It's beautiful. You guys ever been there? Check it out. It's not far. It's on the parkway. Have you been out there? Yeah. It's, it's, it's great. But it's local. And if it weren't for Bigfoot, we wouldn't have it. You guys ever been there? Yeah. We also found, uh, wasn't that where we found the small... Rock formations in the middle of nowhere. Seems like it, yeah. yeah. All right, so what evidence do we have? Everyone wants to know the evidence. All right. Pictures, footprints, hair, tree breaks, eyewitnesses, sightings, the Patrick Gimlin film. I love this one. This is awesome. Again, there's my girl Patty. Patty's fine. All right. Digital. This is the most modern technology. That is exactly what Patty looks like. Look at that photo. Hi. Take her to the prom. Mm -hmm. Updated course. <laughs> so that would make sense. This is the crest right here. <coughs> why? Why do you think they have that suborbital crest right there? Why do people think they have that? Why would that be beneficial to them? Keeps on out their eyes. Nope. But you're not wrong. That that be that true? Bushes. You walk through trees. Nature would do that. All right? See that nose? Why would you need a nose with spread like that? Again, presagital crest would help for the nasal cannula to go back so they'd have a bigger part of their brain would be reduced in the nasal so they could smell better. And you have these wide set eyes for optics. Again, think about how the brain structure would work on that. The prefrontal cortex, that's where that side is. It'd be huge. But that fits. And then the jaw. Look at that. I can't imagine the, the pressure in there. It's incredible. Alright. Here's Patty close up. Now that's a small female, my friends. Remember, this is her foot. This is an actual cast, but a gimlet cast. This is Patty's foot. So, but between that and this is your imagination. I know Mulder's thinking he's going to Pacific Northwest. He's going to find the next Mrs. Dr. Mulder. Sir? So from the picture, how big is Patty? They say Patty's between 7'6 and 8 foot. <clears throat> around 750 pounds. And again, these are all arbitrary numbers because, you know, I don't want to, I'm never going to sit here and tell you this is it, this is the exact sign. Mm -hmm. Anyone to sit here and tell you that this is just everything I've you know, kind of picked up and other specs. This is the averages I've kind of come up with and other people have come up with. I use Meldrum's, you know, Dr. Jeff Meldrum. I go through stuff he's written because it makes sense. That's got a PhD. Well, that's 
Now, at least there's some other versions of type 1 patty types. That guy creeps me out. But that's probably what daddy looks like. I, I know. Not the name. <laughs> Same paragraph. <laughs> now, these are the nice ones. Um, these are different variations seen in Western North Carolina, specifically in our area. This guy right here, see this color? This, red? this is what's reported most in this area. Every once in a while you say soft black, but the color variations are very strange because, you know, most reports have that beef wings, beef jerky kind of color. Now that is, that's also applicable because in nature this is the best camouflage. Black's not necessarily the best if it's snowing. Think about that. So, I mean, but that's that's basically what they think in this area. If he's more blonde, he'd look like my Pekingese. Yes, he would. I was just about to say that. All right. This is also in this area. And this is a very, this is the Janosqua. This is the, uh, this is the one you don't want to run into. There are more reports of this guy showing up uh, all over the country. Yeah, he does. About his 10 foot. Yeah. And they call him the face eater specifically because usually their first mode of attack is to bite you in the face. Wow. Yeah, Oh, that me. Um, if you see that, just walk away. Just, <laughs> it might be one of those things where if you're in a group, you don't have to be the fastest, but you don't want to be the last. <laughs> or, if, or if someone's not feeling so good, it might be one of those instances where you're Tiny and I have this thing. Tiny, and God forgive me, I'm afraid it's going to happen. You know how like famous last words are like, hey y'all watch this? Tiny's probably gonna run into one of these things, I'll be videotaping, and he's gonna go to pet it. It will happen. It will that, happen. That's how he wants to that's how Tiny wants to check out. Now that's a true story. It, it, you, this is exactly what happened. And I'm afraid that one now how since he's selfish, because I gotta walk out of the woods alone and then call the cops and figure out how this is gonna work. <laughs> what happened to him? He pet the monkey. Out of it. <laughs> so right here, just I'll sign whatever. It never happened. I got him. Whatever. But you know, I, I keep telling you, if it looks like that, you can't pet it. Patty, fine. This, no. We'll see what happens. All right. The most commonly typed. These are the variety. I don't necessarily agree with this, but I always put this up because you know you listen to the show. It was a type one, subgroup four. You know. How the hell do you know? You did. You got one of these in your garage? I love it when these guys get on TV or they well, I'm an expert. Oh, okay, where'd you go to school? It doesn't matter. But I'm telling you, you know, it's top one, blah, blah. They're making stuff up. They are making stuff up. They don't know. And if they do know, then they're working for the government or something to that effect. Again, I don't like to pull the government anything, but if someone does know, hypothetically, it would be that. So, this is just types of things people see and they broke it down in you know, these groups. All right, there's the type one, this is the patty type. Type two, this is huge in this area. Type twos tend to be a little bit shorter. They're about eight to nine foot. Um, total no necks. Um, anyone in Virginia, where's, where's Bob? They have the term no necks up there for buggers? Not that All right, I've, no neck, this would be a no neck. If you're in that area. In yeah. other words, they used to call that because they see them and they're walking and there's just absolutely no brain. It's so all muscle. A lot of people say this type 3 is a dog man. Dog man is different. I will, I have seen one. I will go on record of that. That ain't what I saw. This is a total different animal. I think they've just got a different uh, snout structure, like a baboon. And then we have the relic hominid. This would be. Uh, a lot of people think these are up north on the on the east coast. Uh, Maine. This would be what the wild man in Maine would look like. Uh, which is funny because I've talked to someone from Maine that saw the wild man, and 
It was a patty type. Which brings me to my whole thing about, I think they migrate, but that's a different story. Now, there's some evidence that we took, and I'm just going to tell you right now, this is eight pounds for the water. Carrying this much around is a pain. I am lazy. Tiny and I will argue about who's going to carry what, and we will leave it in the Subaru, and that'll be it, because no one wants to carry it. And the truth of the matter is, what's that plastic cast going to get me? If it's close enough to go back to the car to get, I'll do it. I don't like doing them simply because you got to sit there. The other thing is, what made that track might still be floating around there. And it's great if the camera's there, but if it's in a bad mood, or it's not happy that you're stalking it, you know, they might have laws of their own, you know, if I stalk them off. So, we don't want to bother that. But, again, it's a size 15 and a half boot. This, more or less, is the, that's a dog man footprint. Uh, here's the, the toe pads right there, and here's the back part right here. Um, we were in an area, it looked like a war had gone on. I still think something territorial happened there. Uh, there was some other stuff that happened in there that's a whole different story. Uh, I don't know, we need to give that a couple more years before we talk about that publicly. But, there was tracks like that, and there was what I believe to be Bigfoot tracks all over the place. And everything at above nine and a half, ten feet had been pulled down, ripped out. Um, tree branches, it looked like you could see one thing started here and down here, downhill, trees were smashed. Uh, I mean, it was no, there was no way to even say that didn't happen because just if you look at the, it kind of looked like Superman beating up a dude today. One of those things that just the carnage and the wreckage, just if you put it on a tree scale, that, that's what it looked like. It was just that kind of damage. It was ridiculous. Um, this print right here, again, that's probably, I probably should use the other picture. That's 21 by 11. Um, and it was found right next to this. And next to this was, what, about five or six more. And they were all over the place. This was not too far from here. This was pretty local. Um, that was an interesting day. That was the day we went out, and I go out armed. Uh, for those of you who listen to podcasts or do anything with us, we all have our concealed weapons permits. We all go out armed, and it's not for it's just for our protection. It's nothing. We're not out. I'm a no kill guy. Um, I, I don't associate with people that are about killing one, bring one in for two reasons. One, it's stupid. Because why would you do that? And two, you're never going to bring it in. How are you going to be seven, eight miles in the middle of the woods, shoot something 900 pounds, and expect to bring it in? I love these guys on the river. Grab a tooth with what? My channel locks are in the car. Pull a finger off. Get some of its blood. Okay, well, I'm not worried about him. I'm worried about the seven other guys that's with him. That little paybacker, you know, just is being requested. So I'm just a no kill guy. And even, even if it was down to it, uh, I don't think I have a firearm. You know, I've got a 357 or 45. That's, that's it. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be one of those. So, I don't know if that would be strong enough to stop that. Might scare it away. I'd probably do the one, two, three in the air real quick. Trying to figure out where Tiny went. Tiny's like six miles up the road. I'd be trying to pit it. You know it would. That's what's trying to eat you. Um, Tree breaks. I'm delicious. This is actually right here. Uh, again, I wish I had a better picture of this one. That actually, I know that what that kind of looks like just a chunk, but when we looked at it, it looks like just a hand went like this. And it's probably about that big. Like it's just someone scraped it out of there. And that's not rotted. That was solid. Um, tree glyphs all over the place. Here's another rip out of a log. Um, this was actually more impressive when you saw it in person because it's actually, it's, it's not small. It's probably about eight, nine inches around. Um, and then we, we found those all over the place. Tons of those. And those were woven. That was actually, I can't really see it right here, but there was like a smaller tree, like a smaller tree ripped up and woven in there, like tied to knot. 
I, I, I don't know who would do that. And that was 12 feet up. So, um, this was a large area that was completely made from branches. Uh, I believe this to be the highest part of this nest was 10 feet. As possible, it was around 30 feet in circumference. Uh, it was still in real good shape. It was just probably a season old because the leaves had fallen off. But next to all this, we found all these blinds that had just been built. Like naturally, they, they had taken bushes and woven them and stuff. And that's right before I heard that grunt and we decided to leave. Um, so this was while we were finding that, that 21 by 11. So we were pretty close to this guy. Uh, he obviously just didn't want to do this. I think we were his house. And this was the one time we went out unarmed. Because <laughs> the first time I hear that, Broom, I go like this. <laughs> and then I hear Tanner. <laughs> I look at him and he's not moving, he's like this. And then I'm going, you guys are no, we left him in the car. <laughs> he said nothing, we just backed out. Um, so that was, a, that was another interesting experience that we had that wasn't too far away. Local reports. All right, 100 counties in Asheville, mostly type 2s and type 4s. Uh, we've pretty much got reports from every county. Uh, and like I said, when we get reports, you'll be, I saw this over here. It's, it's not, you know, you can go to the BFRO network, and they're not going to get them. A lot of people aren't going to go into that. Uh, we get a lot of reports from people saying, well, you know, two years ago my uncle saw this. And, and I take their word for it. Uh, you know, we're not going to go investigate right then and there, but, you know, if someone says they saw it, they saw it. All right, make sure close to home. We're going to go love the bunk home camp. All right. Barnesville right now, three or four a week. Just different areas, usually farms, something like that. Right. Saw something running, saw something. Now it's possible they're confusing dog man uh, with Bigfoot simply because of that particular area. Again, I don't know. I always like this picture in Hendersonville. So this, who remembers this report a couple of years ago? This was all over the place. I, mean, uh, <clears throat> I don't think they ever debunked it. Because <coughs> that's allegedly Mr. Foot. Now this is a bear. This is going to buy those bears and put them on your mailbox. That thing came up to here on me. I, I thought the guy admitted it was a hoax. Uh, so that, that was that a different thing? That might have been, but like, I've never heard this one was a hoax. There was a guy that, that There was a guy in a suit, but that was in Mary. Was it? Yeah. yeah. No, but, but, no, but this is Hendersonville. This has never been uh, disproven. Um, that that like I said, that bear came up to about here on okay. me. So if that's about there, and he's hunched over. You know, that might be step for it. Again, but it's local report. That's why I put it in here. So this is something I've never done before. Um, and I probably am the only one that's ever done anything like this because this is kind of like just giving up the ghost. But I like you guys, and I think you guys need to see exactly what my reports look like. Every one of these red circles is a report from last year. That is the crux of my investigation work right there. That's basically giving it up. That's what I got. Uh, some of these X's are dog, and that's a dog man report. Um, when we went there, I believe that we were actually being traced by a dog, tracked by a dog man, because uh, we saw him twice. And this was close to an area right here that I had had a personal encounter with about two years prior. This is what 2018 looked like for the Asheville Cryptid Society. Uh, I seriously doubt anyone will ever show you that in any other organization. That's just basically me being honest with you. Uh, I said, you know, this is local stuff. That's pretty local. That's real close to someone's home. Right around this general area. Up here. Up yeah, I, I figured. Well, it's and he's part of the camera. He's the red camera now. Anything? Yeah. We'll talk about it later. Yeah. How do you know? Yeah. Again, that's what we uh, that's what we had last year. All right. So where else does Bigfoot live? He's everywhere. The only report we've ever had of Bigfoot is white. And they have mm -hmm. puck wedgies. They have little people. They got a smaller, more violent version. Ruin your little out. Uh, 
I like this one. This is the reported Bigfoot sightings since what, 1930? Uh, anyway. So there's like 3,200. All these reports, all confirmed. I just thought it was a cool fact because that gives you an idea of how many people there's over where we are. Now I think we're at the Appalachian Trail. Yeah, I'm going somewhere this. I went from Canada back then. Canada back then too. That's my personal belief. All right. And when we're doing Bigfoot, we always have to do his cousins. All right? And I was like going through this. The dog man. Now has anyone here ever seen Dogman? I have. That's about what I saw. That's a good representation. I will say this, it was more muscular than, than this representation. Uh, and it wasn't me. I was just driving up the interstate, or I was driving up the parkway, and I was just down there looking at a rock, sitting on a rock, <coughs> and it was just looking around, looking at me, but it cared less. Uh, that thing was bigger than the Honda Fit I was driving. And if it wanted to eat me for a snack, it really probably just could have reached out of its arm, pushed me off the road, and crunch. Could have cared less. It won't take much to be bigger than a fit. This is true. <laughs> this is true, but it was. Um, most dogman reports describe three different types. Some have tails, some do not. Um, this is the way I do them. Because, again, this is where people's area, this is what takes me off. People break it down. Okay, it was a type 2 subsection 4. Uh, again, how do you don't, don't try to make it. So I just go by three. I give, I give three classifications. Sometimes with or without tails. And colors tend to vary. Most would be black, gray, blackish gray, or that, that reddish color. Uh, we've had that. And some actually have spots or, 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 or mange. And some, but most of them are black. Um, and I believe they go gray just like other animals do. They still get like, that muzzle look too. But I call them Alpha, Betas, and Charlies. All right, um, alpha right here. I've had alpha reports. This is this is just a good one, but um, we've, this, this should be higher, uh, ten foot. I've had alpha reports up to ten foot. I've had them both with and without tail. All right, beta, right here, probably the most common. Um, again, something you don't want to run into. And then this guy right here, I call him Charlie. They they call this the the. Uh, the seeker, the uh, Cherokee call them the seeker, or uh, sometimes they'll call them the Wendigo, but that's probably not the same creature. This is just what I think he gets mistaken for. But these are about the three basic sizes uh, from local reports. And I personally think this is pretty much, you know, this guy right here, that's pretty much the one seen around here the most, but we have had reports of this guy. Um, right here in the southwest, that's where this guy's pretty they can't talk about dog meal without talking about Kentucky. Um, in the Eastern Kentucky, still Appalachia. But this is a land between the lakes, LBL. Anyone ever heard of that? The LBL? Huge believer in that. Huge believer in that. Uh, that's a place we're trying to get to. We've got some stuff planned and, and we plan on going there. The LBL is delivered, it's, it's, it's divided into two spots. It's the northern part and the southern part. Um, for those of you who listen to Bigfoot Outlaws and stuff like that, they won't step foot in the northern part. They won't even drive it. There it goes, dog bed sighted in the woods. There's a buddy right there. This is the Beast of Seven Shoots. My personal beliefs is, is I remember I showed you that the three the three types of Bigfoot. I think he's a type three, see this now. This is actually, a lot of people thought that was a poodle. That's actually a golden retriever. Just to give you a size. I thought that was a poodle for years. I just recently learned. I was recently told, and again, this is one of these internet things that I was told. That was actually a American Kubo. They cleared that up. They talked to the guy that saw that. And they said it was a gold retriever. Full grown. Take a look at the size. How big is a gold retriever? 130 pounds? 
I mean, our, our, our chocolate lab was 140. She had a little bit. <laughs> she would be out in the woods and get some bugs out there. She Those reports state that witnesses believe that the creature enjoys scaring them. Because of this, Dogman is referred to as a crypto terrorist. That's a term coined by Dark Waters, a crypto terrorist. You'll hear these reports, <clears throat> and they'll be like, this, you know, nine foot, 1200 pound werewolf was staring at me in the window, scratching the window, doing this, doing that. And then it's basically laughing about how scared you were in life. And they're like, this one. It's possible. I mean, they might have a sixth sense of humor. You don't know. They've got to be intelligent because they remain, you know, hidden. I think they're pack animals, so, you know, maybe they're impressing their buddies. You know, maybe it's how they get the kicks. One of them goes across the street, go terrify the kid next door, you know. <laughs> you know. So I'm in the woods again. There's a bigger picture of that other one I showed you. Um, this gives a better representation. But this is just an example of how this goes through our time. So I think this is what, 72? Yeah. Again, this this was actually this was actually proven faked. I just like the way because it represented how fast it would be going and how how we can just catch a picture of that thing. Again, I don't know how they faked that, but it was allegedly in terms of fake. Um, this is the most common sight. You see a dog man. That's his head, and they'll be sleeping under a tree in the woods. Makes sense. They get tired. Uh, here's another good one. This is. Again, this one's never proven fake either. That's his face. Um, I guess he's high, he's like sitting on more of his haunches than anything. The witness had said this. This is a six-foot stockhead fence. When he stood up, he had about a foot and a half over the fence. Uh, again, other types of cryptids. Gotta love the Mothman. He's a harbinger. Who believes in Mothman? He's real. Lizard Man, South Carolina. They just had another report of him not too long ago. Had a couple. Yeah. Is it the same spot they were before? Well, he's got the swamp. He's got a pretty big area out there. He's got a specific swamp. Swamp area. Yeah. yeah. Where's that out? Yeah. Skateboard. South Carolina. What part? Um, okay, what's the escape? What is it? Yeah, escape. Okay. So, lizard man facts. He's got red eyes, three fingers, green scaly skin. He's about seven foot tall. That's actually about most reports. Uh, South Carolina. Was it called Southport? Skateboard. Skateboard. Yeah. Is that in the coast? No, that's in. That's not this. Isn't it like northeast of? Columbia, around in that general area? I think so. I, I'd have to see a map that is, because I've seen it before, but it's just been so long. Yeah, I think it's something that generally is. Um, very active in this area, too. A lot of Thunderbird sightings. Uh, Cherokee Nation, huge believers in Thunderbird. Uh, I've never seen one, but I can imagine, you know, with condors, what are they, 7, 8 foot wingspan? 10, 10 to 12. So it's not too far out to believe there'd be something bigger than that. The Pup Wedgie, I love these guys. Um, I graduated, I got a, I went to Western, and when they were building Western, they came upon what they described as Hobbit homes. All throughout where they were building the stadium. And uh, they brought in North Carolina State Bureau and all these people investigated. And what they ended up doing is just pulled yeah. over. Um, when I was coming out, I used to, I take a class out there at night. And I still don't know what the hell I saw out there, but I was pulling around the back, like behind the school, to get back on the road, and these two little things just whoosh, ran across the street real quick, and I still to this day don't know what they were. But to me, it looked like almost like Keebler elves with hair. I just, I don't know what it was. But our puck wedgies, they're reported all over the world. Uh, leprechauns have been mistaken for puck wedgies, things like that. They just regionally look different. Uh, the Ukatina. I've got a friend of mine that swears he saw one of these uh, by Cherry Falls. Swears. Says his head was the size of a Volkswagen. 
and he's a cryptic guy. He's, he's actually, we don't know him. Anyway. What Blake said, and that's why he's never been back. He's afraid if he brings his kid better, he's never going to see his kid again. And here's my big question: Why are Christians kept a secret? Anyone? We have to rewrite history. I think you're right. All right. And here's my answer. I don't know, but I will tell you this: See this? There's two of these. That's Asheville Airport. Why would you have those in Nashville Airport, specifically in spring? Two of them. And all they're doing is flying up and down the Hot Springs area. I know this for a fact because I was talking to the guy who was flying it. I said, what, uh, what are you guys doing? Training. And they had the big old front nose of the cone right there. That's the uh, infrared. So during the day, they're flying these things. Up and down specifically cryptid hotspots with infrared, the thermal imaging during the day. <laughs> they looking for bootleggers? Wouldn't that be funny if Bigfoot was a boot, yeah, bootlegger? <laughs> They're going to get him. He's got like an overalls. <coughs> Y'all want some? Now there's stories in Ohio where they, they steal the mesh and get shrunk up there. So. And you never know. Um, this is something I like to harp on. This is safety while doing research. And I've been a hypocrite about this because I'm, I'm not the brightest guy. Every once in a while I'll do something stupid and I'll like go out on my own and do something stupid. And that's that's almost cost me several times. Uh, the last time I did that, I didn't think I was coming back. I thought that was game over. Uh, but there was a few issues. But I've learned, you know, you have player and prepare and perform. You, you gotta be smart. You gotta be safe. Never go out alone. Ever. I don't care how bored you are or how think, oh I can do this. Right? It's just stupid. If you go out alone, you probably plan not to come back. That's just the way it is. Because you never know what's gonna happen. You never know if you're gonna something injured, car breaks down, you never know. Equipment failure, you never know. I applaud these guys that go out there and they think they're tough and they do like these, you know, Iron Man, oh, I don't need this for six weeks, I'll go out the Personally, I think they're stupid. It's nice to know you can do it, but why take the chance something happens? Guys, REI, and I know we're here with REI, but this, they do a lot of cool stuff, but honestly, I, I, I laminate this. This is a little checklist they have on the website, it's free to download. This is awesome because it basically tells you what you need, what to bring, what you do. I use it. And some of my equipment's not on here, but you know, my camera equipment, stuff like that. But all your other camping essentials, they're on there. And again, it's free. Save money when you can. Buy a good camera. Um, something I always tell people, uh, you can get here. But this right here, if you buy nothing at all, invest in a compass. All right, this is this will save your life. All right, this is actually an old world. I've had this forever, but that's all you need. People think, oh, I can use my phone. I can use this. I have been out in the woods where my phone did not work, and along with the phone not working, the signal for the compass to work did not work. The car radio did not work. I mean, it's you know you've got to have backups on backups on backups. You got to be smart. That's so why I always tell: plot out your route, use date, up to date maps. That's, I'm sure this is up to date. It's probably a lot more modern. What I've got is usually this is topographical. Yeah, this is a good one. This was revised about 10 years ago, but yeah, that's probably up to date. Always use something. You gotta have, you have and communicate. Communicate. You know, there's been several times where I've had phone calls from a dear friend that someone wasn't, you know, communicating. I may or may not have been, you know, bear bait. Can't imagine that I don't that know one. why you're looking at me. <laughs> you want to handle that one? Because <laughs> you wouldn't communicate. You've got to be smart. Anyone can get lost. I don't care how bad you think you are. Oh, I'll, I'll use the sun. It's four o'clock, right? All right. 
Anyone can get lost. Right? Here's a prime example. I'm lost. My wife, who was taking the picture, was yelling the fact that we were lost. <laughs> and I said, no, baby, I'll go up here, carve your name in that tree, and I'll figure out where we are. I was buying time, folks. I was buying time. <laughs> Please, Lord, let the phone work. And we found the path to get out of there, but we lost. <coughs> Not going to lie. Again, always have a compass. I always have two or three. Because you never know, you might fall and break one. Always use common sense think before you act. I like putting this guy up here because, again, picture Tiny over here, getting a running start, <coughs> trying to jump on him. I can see that happen. Just I video. Think, I, I, well, that's, again, he's looking at me. Tiny's coming around this way. We're going to put him in the panzer, right? That's the plan. Will it happen? Probably not. Um, this is an example of how easy it is to get lost. Uh, here's Tiny and I. We're looking at this tree. Why are we looking at this tree? Is this the tree we went under the first time? I can tell you exactly what he's saying right here. I don't know. <laughs> you were supposed to keep track of that. And we got out, but we were pretty good in woods, and uh, you know, it takes a couple minutes sometimes. This, and again, I like what this is. This is an example. Anyone can get lost. Any questions? <laughs> So what are we doing this summer 2019? Uh, we're going to continue to explore and investigate, try to prove the theory I came up with about the cryptic cave theory. And this is just a little footnote I like to put up there. But what we're basically going to do is we're going to three or four different states, and we're going to try and prove that there's a cave system connecting everything that cryptids can use as basically a highway system. Um, we're also going to talk about uh, a city that was purposely flooded in the weeks. Uh, I like that little wave, right? I saw that head nod right there. Uh, that was purposely flooded uh, in the weeks of World War II just beginning, where they diverted 30,000 men for 36 months to build a dam to flood something. Now, I got some reports, like, I don't know how realistic they were, that one of the reasons why they did this is because they were having wolf men come out of caves at night. So we're going to talk about that and we're actually going to dive that area and try and get pictures. I'm a former commercial diver, so not really worried about depth. What lake is that? Huh? Montana? Exactly. exactly. Alright, this tiny active investigator. <laughs> Very <laughs> active, as you can tell. That's a actually, horrible picture. Actually, you want to laugh? You want to laugh? This is right before something happened, right over here. Yeah. Tiny, you all right? Yeah, man, I'm relaxing. Do you love me? It's a horrible right. picture. Uh, <laughs> that, I love that picture. That's hilarious. These kids, what the hell are you doing? And uh, this is how you can contact us at any time. Folks, have any questions? Anyone want to share experience they have with a cryptid or something? Anyone? I would like to open up the floor to that. Yeah, go ahead, please. What's your name? Uh, Shannon. Hey, Shannon. How you doing? So I'm actually, so I'm a high school student, okay. but I'm actually actively investigating for a friend of mine. I became friends with her through this event, actually, which I find very interesting, but I do have some photos, so if you want I'd love to. to. Okay. Okay. I have some photos of some footprints, unfortunately, for all the castings. I understand. Yeah. Uh, I'm footprints a fan of and also video evidence. Oh, I've got a video evidence. Uh, it's on YouTube, but it was very quick and she didn't realize it. I she filled it with Is this at a graveyard? No, no. Um, that would be on my channel, but that's not the point. <laughs> um, it was actually at her house in the Edgewood Triad area here in North Carolina. Yeah, what's she's And um, she thinks, well, a lot of people have been saying it's a rape. Oh, I'm, I'm very familiar with Ray. Right? I'm, not, not, I'm not a big believer. Um, but I'm starting to rule out possibilities, and I think it's more towards paranormal than cryptic, even though they do go hand in hand. We got you covered. But that's quite interesting. So if you'd like to see photos, definitely. Anyone else? What's a rake? A rake's uh, an elongated. Being, it kind of looks like a Wendigo. 
but it uh, doesn't have a horn, and it's got a couple of teeth, and it basically is like a, almost a ghoul. Goes around, jello murdering, eats people. Yeah. Scary. Anyone else? Yeah. Questions? Question for you. Yes, ma'am. We used to do a lot, of, my husband and I used to do a lot of camping. Um, that's how we ended up down here from the Chicagoland area. I okay, but um, we used to camp uh, in the Smokies and the Balsams in uh -huh. the far campground way up high yeah. off Cherokee. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yep, yeah. beautiful back there, very secluded, uh -huh. hardly anybody goes Don't back have Thanksgiving there. back there. Huh? Don't have Thanksgiving back there. <laughs> uh, that was my question. Have there been reports of things back there? Oh, yeah. Excellent. Um, okay, because there was one. We had gone on a family with my younger daughter on the main trail going back before you could take the car the one way on the one way trail back there. Anyway, it was the walking horse trail, whatever, and this was probably 15 years ago. Um, anyway, long story short on that one, as we got farther in, we flushed out some wild boar and they went up the hill and my husband wanted to you know, the knife, but whatever. <laughs> scared us, we went back. Well, the next time we camped there, I thought they were all taking a nap, and I thought one afternoon I'd just maybe try to do the trail again and get back to where we had seen the wild boar and everything. Too brave. I was brave. Not anymore. Um, went back. It was probably a good mile, mile and a half down the trail to where the boar were, maybe not a little bit farther. Um, got maybe about halfway down Forest got real quiet, uh, got spooky, got freaked me out uh, to the point where I was, you know, my spidey sense was up and moving. And I kept trudging along and thinking there's something here watching me, there's something going on. But like I said, it went dead quiet. I mean, the birds, the animals, everything went dead. And I finally got to a point, trudged on a few more feet, got to a point and said, mm, no don't need to go any farther here, need to get back to back up the trail. And Probably everything. saved your life. Uh, and the more I think about it, the more I explore into different things. I'm like, Have you read Missing 401? Yeah, I've read all of them. Yeah, I've, I've read got all them all too. And I tell you what, the, the, it's a brilliant book to write because it writes itself. All it does is take the reports. Scarier than hell. And it's terrifying because these people are missing. Um, went Obviously went back up the trail and I don't know how far back up the trail, but after a little while, birds started singing, everything started clearing that's, up see, that's again. That's a key example. Every time, every every dogman encounter I've ever heard that didn't end up well, or every Bigfoot encounter, I honestly believe there's some kind of <coughs> pheromone or something released by these creatures that scares the bejesus out of everything else, and they either shut up or they get the hell out of Dodge. Well, and because the, everything, every bugs, there's lightning bug reports. I, I just got this report the other day. There's dogman sighting. Dogman's coming up this way, and there's this whole field. All the lightning bugs on this side are up. Nothing over here. He said it just looked like someone turned the lights off on one side of the room. It, 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 even the <coughs> noises, the, the animal noises, yep. everything, everything went back sounds. on. It was still that sense as I was walking back up the trail alone that something was watching. <coughs> it was the spidey sense. It was just, and you always it's better. To it's better, but it wasn't, and so I've always been curious as if there's anything back there. And what's what's all the stuff about um, hidden bases and things back in that direction? Oh, UFOs over cashiers. Well, cashiers and uh, yeah. supposedly yeah, back that's in that lady, general yeah, area, you know, too. That's it. Uh, okay. I, you know what? I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to discredit it. I just don't know. Is it po Anything's possible. Well, my other I, mean, I think if you're going to talk about underground UFO bases, my associates right here are probably experts on that. Yeah. From there, I I actually live in Haywood County, so what's huh. going on in Haywood County? There's a lot of Bigfoot dogman reports in Haywood County. I, I live out in the Bethel area, so just curious. I've had Bigfoot reports out there, yeah. not a whole lot, but they're out there. They're out there. I mean, yeah, but you know, these again, it's all seasonal. I, I honestly believe that's why they I think they migrate. I think they go south in the winter, and they go when it gets hot. They go to Canada, and they go around. That's just again, it's my opinion. They'll be 100 wrong. And I'm sure there's some that stayed because they have perfect food sources or they're deep enough and was no budget. But that's, that's very possible. Again, I don't discredit anything you never know. Because right. there's nothing. They could, like, if my tunnel or, or if my cave theory is true, you know, <coughs> you get a certain amount of depth underground, you're around, it's over 70 degrees. Isn't so. there supposed to be a cave theory that, um, oh gosh, what's the big cavern in Kentucky? 
mammoth. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> the mammoth's hooked into everything. I think it is. Heads that's north. part of my. That's I've got a buddy of mine from that area, and this summer we're going to be. That's part of the thing we're going to be doing. We just don't have the timeline done because everyone. It's the hard part is arranging everyone's schedule. The easy part's going. The hard part is getting everyone together. So that's that's where that comes in. Anyone else? Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> that story that was in the news about the kid uh, yeah. lost overnight. Oh, with the, the bear? bear. With the yeah. bear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's Bigfoot. I don't. That's Bigfoot. I don't care what anyone's. There's a report from Michigan in 1858. A little girl disappearing. <coughs> uh, that's a David Pilates book. Yeah. Uh, my date could be wrong. Yeah. Something like that. And she said that she was uh, taken by the wolf, mm -hmm. and the wolf ate her hat, but it gave her berries. Kept it warm at night. Same kind of thing, same kind of story. And there's other there's other reports of like Bigfoot grabbing small kids, and keep them for a little bit, uh, snuggle them with at night, give them berries, and then bringing them back to campsites. But again, I, I, my thing on that, I actually called, uh, I called to get the police report on that, and I talked to the lady in charge of all the reports, and she refused to call me back because <laughs> I, I I made a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. The best yeah. <laughs> Second, I said it. I was like, oh, darn it. Mistake one. Speaking of kids, the child that was a special needs child that uh, got lost and they couldn't find it for a couple of days um, south of Charlotte or in that general area, and they ended up finding him in the stream. It, any more on that one? Anybody heard anything that strange one. about that one? They're keeping that whole little pot. You know, they don't talk about that. Once they get. And thank God they found a kid. Let me just say that. Thank God the kid's all right. But you're never going to hear. Well, from that kid, yeah. but this kid was found dead in the yeah. stream. I um, happen to know about it because I have a special needs grandson. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's, They're either extremely brilliant people. Yeah. Or scientists or Usually with a German background. You know my, he, was, uh, he was a seatmate next to my grandson who was a special needs child in the school. And, Charlotte area. So, I'm sorry about I did not know. Yeah. No, I didn't hear that. But she's hope he's right. Um, special needs are highly intelligent, yeah. and most of the highly intelligent ones that disappear all for some reason have a German ancestry. Right. Or they're on the spectrum. Or they're on the spectrum, or they're like high end doctors or physicists. A lot of people I just thought that the child, the, the special needs child that was missing, when they found him, they found him in the middle of the stream, and he was kind of weighted down in the stream. Now, whether it was just some whack job or whether it was something else that had gotten in. Because it sounded an awful lot like the Yeah, there's a Reddit for missing photo and um Check more of the details for the recent missing kids because they've changed, the pattern has changed. And as far as, you know, like it used to be if you're missing a certain shoe, right, you know, it's a missing photo. Right, right. Go on Reddit, there's usually, you know, you can see anything from the case report versus David Pilates is he's like I follow him on Twitter. And he's still very active in these things. And you know it's funny he's up here I uh, brought this as an example to give some big things. But what he talks about the FOIA. Mm -hmm. Well, just have to <coughs> have one right here. And it was my FOIA and I got absolutely nothing that I requested. And what I got back was completely redacted to the point where it was pretty much, they sent me blank pages. And that's what, that's what I got. What now was the request I, Huh? What was the request for? There was a, uh, a kid that killed himself allegedly in Tennessee, not too far from here actually, and he had a white Ford, F uh, white Ford Ranger. He went to a Walmart. And he had some mental issues, allegedly, and he had some drug abuse in the past. But here's why I was interested. All they found was part of a skull cap, and I think a mole in his campsite. But they said it was a suicide. It's better. He killed himself with an X-Acto knife, put the X-Acto knife back in to his case, back into his bag, tightened it up, Tied it all back up and put it into his, his bundle. And then he crawled off about a mile and a half and died. And then he was eaten. Um, is it plausible? Yeah, but at this time of year, black bears aren't really 
eating meat, they're, you know, they're doing pretty good on everything else. That, again, you don't know. It's, it, it, anything's possible. It just seemed to me it was a little suspicious. I got more... A little? Uh, I, got more, uh, I got more information off the internet, off the newspapers, than I got from the foyer. Uh, they didn't even give me his name before they complained to them. So it's, it's, they're difficult, you know? And then I've had some people get four years and they're, cool. I honestly believe in subject matter. Once they're aware of who you are, what you're doing, I think that's, once you're on the radar, it becomes different. You're going to try to stay under as long as you can. You never know. Anyone else? Sorry. I've uh, read a lot of books and talked to a lot of people that have done the Appalachian Trail, and I just wonder what your thoughts are about it because uh, I've never really had anybody tell me that they've ever seen anything, you know, like a Bigfoot or anything. I wonder, because it's such a highly traveled trail with hikers, do you think that they would like avoid, you know, being within sight of that trail? I think at certain times of the year they avoid it, but so, I, I also think most of the time, by the time we're doing the Appalachian Trail. Yeah. They've already migrated. So, so, so I kind of think the Appalachian Trail would be fairly safe to, be, to go on. This time of year? No. Right now? No. You've got to, I think this time of year, this is this is what I call hot spot time of year. Right. This, this month specifically for that area you know, we're talking about. Oh, yeah. But uh, another month or two. It'll be dead. Yep. March and April. Exactly. Exactly. And then they're going up. And then they're hairy. So yeah. They're yeah. So, so exactly. <laughs> But think about it, you know, today, you know, even if it's 70 degrees up there, it's still hot for them. I, I'm guessing, I can get it. But, you know, you, you're talking about someone, to maintain, like the average Bigfoot, uh, I can't remember if Meldrum said this or not, but they have to maintain 15,000 calories a day. So, so think about that. Yeah, so, I mean, that's a massive food yeah, supply. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. In your opinion, on a scale from one to ten, where would you say their intelligence level is? And if so, also, um, if it if it's high, do you think that maybe um, their frequency rate is pretty high, and that's why they're so elusive on camera, and it's harder to capture them super clear? That's a really good question. And I'll tell you, like you know, if if we go with a normal gas score for a human being, you know, global assessment functioning. Um, let's just say perfect global assessment of functions are 100 for us, but that's not just a, that's not just a gene for general intelligence, that's just all around functioning. Okay? I think they're probably right up there past us when it comes to their environment. Um, in ours, they're probably at 60 or 70. I, I think they're highly intelligent, I think they learn, I think they observe, uh, and I tell you, I, it's one of these things where, let's just say you had 20 or 30 dogmen in a pack, right? And they decided they didn't want to see any more hairless Bigfoot run around their woods. So they're going to get together and they're going to go attack a small town and wipe it out. Could they do it? Of course. Have they done it? Not because you know them. All right. So, but I think, you know, it depends. It's situational. And I, I give that example simply because I think the way they're going to act is going to be situational. I think they're always going to look, you know, again, what's the chances of me being hurt versus, you know, the, say like the court can take. And I think that's why they're such good hunters is because they, they, they work in packs. You know, they're not ever going to take one thing out by themselves unless they get a rogue or something like that. Even though the way they're designed, they can rip anything apart. So, I mean, I'm not deflecting your question. I think they're highly intelligent. I think they're very, very possible. They have a learning curve. So, I, it's a hard one to put. But I'd say in their environment, they're, they're 100%. Do you think they're also telepathic and they can mess with your technology? That see, I two three years ago I'd say no, but it's it's I don't think it's telepathy. I think I think they have infrasound. I think they have infrasound. The well, yeah. Well, I think that's just their color spectrum. I think that's just the way they see things. It's like the way dogs see things. But I I think they've they've got the infrasound that for some reason that specific frequency they can use has the potential to mess with our electronics. I'm not saying they they are sitting there going or alien or anything like that. I just think they they have been just coincidentally yeah. the internet may go out. I mean We've been I have had battery drain. Yeah. We've been in the middle of nowhere. We've had issues. GoPro, just dead, brand new battery, nothing. You know, tape recorder goes dead. Brand new battery just and then you know you get back to the car, everything's working fine. 
so like someone what, turned on an off switch. What's your thought then tying some of that in as far as an inter interdimensional kind of thing? I don't buy that. You don't buy it? No, no, no. What I've seen is corporeal, and it's it's raw nature. But even if they weren't interdimensional, could they slow themselves down so much to make themselves look like they're phased in and out? No, I think it's, I think it's, they've got built-in camouflage. I think it's their blur. I think, you know, they were looking at polar bears. Polar bear looks white well, so and gray. They're aware of their surroundings. Right, but you look at look at the way a polar I mean, a polar bear can bend in because his, his fur mirrors what's exactly. over here. It's kind of like Predator. Exactly. It's very much like, you know, there, there's theories that Bigfoot's hair is hollow. Well, if that's true, then when he's around, his hair is going to pick up that color. It's like mm -hmm. up here, it's like, like a lizard. Exactly, like a chameleon. Mm -hmm. So I think they've got like that built in. And let's look at the color spectrum. Mm -hmm. They're black, that auburn red. You know, and look at, look at camouflage. I mean, they, they've got perfect camouflage. If you take someone in a Bigfoot suit and stick them six feet in woods right over here, you're not going to see them. So I think they've got that perfect camouflage. You know, plus they're patient and they're intelligent. You know, I mean, there's been reports of people think that they're seeing like a tree stump over here, and all of a sudden the tree stump gets up, it's ten foot tall, and walks away. You know, so I just think they're masters of their, their environment, and I, I think you have to be, because honestly, you know, they've been avoiding us. You know, and, and the other thing I have a theory, I you know, deforestation. Everyone thinks on deforestation, but we're 84 percent intact. From Way our, our natural resource, our, our forest, and everything, we're 84 percent intact from when we originally got this, when we originally came here. That means we've only managed to destroy, you know, 16, you know, 16, 17 percent, roughly. Turn the cities, roads, everything. Everything else is still forest and untouched. That's a lot of space. The other thing I tell people, you know, people say, "Well, why are we seeing them so much now?" Blah blah blah. If you read, there's a book called Pox Americana, and it talks actually about smallpox and the Revolutionary War and how much damage it actually did, not just on this side. A lot of people think 1776, the world stopped. It was just the East Coast. Everybody was going up north, south, and west. Smallpox was wiping out everyone, Native Americans, Europeans, everyone. Well, smallpox is also one of the few viruses that will jump to, guess what, the Great Ape. So if Bigfoot... It's really common in great ape, gigantopetitis. Guess what's going to kill them? Smallpox. So there's reports in Canada, the Quick Bowie, the Quick Bowie tribe. It's it's way up north. They're they're dying in there, and Bigfoot would be coming in from the woods trying to get help. They knew how to communicate with them, and they said we can't help you. We're dying too, and they actually died together. So my thing is, I think their immunity's built up. Just like ours did, and over time they became immune to our diseases. And I think that's probably the same thing happened with dogmate. Dogmate's not new. Cenocephali's been around. Alexander the Great. If you read about Alexander the Great, he hired a pack of Cenocephali to be his to fight for him. They're mercenaries. They didn't speak English. They could understand what he said. They were incredible metalsmiths, and they were fierce. One was worth twenty. And he, he hired them to fight for them. So, you know, look at Anubis. Take Anubis and look at Dogman today. Same thing, I mean, you know, so it's, where's he been? I don't know. You know, there's a whole thing, if, if you believe that uh, the Egyptians came here prior to Columbus, you know, we have places in uh, Ohio, there's Egyptian relics and treasures and stuff in caves there. And then you've got the Grand Canyon theory, you know, that they brought all this treasure and everything with it. Who's to say they didn't bring CNSF level for protection? Does that mean that the uh, song can be a chimera then? Very possible. Very possible. I, it, again, we're dealing with stuff that we can't, we don't know where it came from. We know it's been here forever. Bigfoot, in my opinion, has been here, it probably predates us. Where did he come from originally? I don't know. Is he originally from planet Earth? Again, I'm not going to sit here and tell oh yeah, he's been from I don't know. I mean, I, I, I wish I did. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm writing a book right now, and I've got chapter one done real well, but it's like chapter two, where do we go from there? <laughs> How do you explain it? Question mark, question mark, question mark. What's chapter three going to be? <laughs> Running from the cookie man. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it just depends, you know. Again, everything I'm telling you is just research I've done or things I've heard that I believe. Um, no one can sit here and tell you the exact truth of the matter because they don't know. And if they do know, they wouldn't be. 
So it's, it's one of those things you just got to take the evidence for yourself. And again, I want people to go out and research. I want you guys out there looking for something. Find the truth. You know, you got to keep believing this stuff. Because if, if you don't, you know, then there's a whole large thing that's being hid from us. And we don't know why. And we should know. Is there any more questions? Yeah, I've got a couple more. Yes, ma'am. Um, just out of curiosity, in the Davis Polidus book, I think it's the hunter's book at the very end where the woman hunter in the blind in Ohio or wherever she was, she saw something that was predator-like. Um, and suppose Her husband's a physicist? And his husband's right. a physicist and she got it on film. Uh -huh. um, any reports of anything like that around here? Out of curiosity? Matter of fact, yes. Excellent. But where? Not far from here, but we prefer not to talk about it, but almost the exact same In situation. Haywood County? No. No. Good. Close. <laughs> Very close. Close to Hamilton? Excellent. <laughs> Driving distance. <laughs> uh, maybe I need to talk to you. I just need to. But uh, make I know sure. two people who I trust completely with my life that saw the same thing. And uh, did this day, huh? What was that? It looked like Predator. That Predator okay. imagey. Yeah. That, and just, that and then shadowy. Just, yep, that whole thing. Okay. And there thing. was a hologram. Hologram type of thing. And it was there. <coughs> and it was staring. Um, yeah. Anyone else? Any uh, recent sightings or uh, calls about Lindell Gorge? About what? Lindell Gorge? No, not that no. I've heard. Um, I haven't got any, but that doesn't mean there aren't any. Yeah, I mean, that was uh, the only experience that I've had around here. Was, was I had a couple last year. I'll take that. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, that was the kid that was backpacking, and he said all he saw was a black arm. And he got thrown. We, we were, we were. My girlfriend and I was, you know, we took all day to get down. We were swimming in a pretty, you know, remote swimming hole down there that not a lot of people know about. It. And it was, Say it right, swimming. Swimming hole. There. And uh, <laughs> basically, a, a boulder came arcing. Yeah, you from, got, from the eastern rim. I mean, there were no. Other, you got asked to leave, brother. Yeah, there were no. That's all you got to tell me. No trees no. breaking anything. It was just a rock. That came how, how, okay. How much you think that weighs? I mean, it would kill me if it hit me. Exactly. Yeah. So who's going to pick it up and get? If you saw, I mean, there's arc, no trail on the eastern rim. Yeah, so near that it. means it got. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's yeah. You were asked to leave. Yeah. And we just looked at each other like. There was the, the the report I got or heard. I didn't get this from person. It was second or third hand. Was a kid was hiking, and he got. Uh, he had an Osprey backpack, like the mid-sized one, and he said he was walking, he heard her, and then all he saw from his perfect vision was like this arm come out of nowhere and grab, grab him his up. pack. He get, like, picked him up by the pack and threw him, <coughs> and he was like KO. He woke up a couple hours later, and you could see like, is a, the, you know how they make them in a ballistic nylon, <laughs> the packs? You could see where like something, had just something huge just grabbed it. Stretched it out. I'm actually working some satin. I don't know. Not far from that area. Yeah. Not, not, not exactly in the gorge, but not far from it. I mean, it's, it's pretty remote up there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, on the eastern end, yeah, the there's no trails anywhere. It. We were. That's not okay. And it came from the east. Uh, right. yeah. yeah. And she wasn't doing anything. I believe you. I mean, they'd have to make a little bit about it. Let's get out of here. Plus, he stinks. And I told her when we were in the car. And we stink usually greasy. She was like, somebody threw something. Anyone else? Well, I tell you, uh, for those of you who are new, uh, if you would like to join, you've got this little page, if you just fill out here. And since Robin was kind enough to make me some, some uh, certificates, I'm more than happy to fill them out. I just need you to fill out the application first. And then uh, we've got your cards, too. So we'll give you a number of cards and everything. So just fill that out for me, kind of like one row. And everyone here, feel free to grab a notebook. These are just little freebies I like to give out. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. If you guys want to come up and flip through this book, I just pulled little things in here, like uh, pretty much our mission statement, uh, little Bigfoot 101 about what to bring, some other stuff, and uh, just some pictures, like some thermo image pictures of our fuzzy little buddy.